Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet, where you can also travel to Mile High in August, August 15th to 18th, Mile High 7, 2019. And on this Mile High Podcast, we'll be interviewing another one of our speakers coming up at this year's event, one of our continuing education speakers. And before I introduce him, if you are enjoying these podcasts, uh, share those with others. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and you can listen to it on iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, um, a whole number of platforms such as Stitcher. So wherever you are listening to it, whatever is easiest for you, uh, hit subscribe. We look forward to you enjoying many episodes to come. That being said, for this episode, we are proud to introduce Dr. Brian Dooley. He's a 2005 graduate faculty member of Sherman College of Chiropractic, and he's, his official title is assistant professor. He teaches classes in terminology, history, chiropractic history, case history, patient education, media communications, and the 33 principles. And a little known fact, there's 33 steps as you enter Sherman College. And Dr. Bryan is also the chair of the newly formed business department at Sherman College. He's been in private practice since 2007 after associating for two years. And he was in the inaugural class of the Academy of Chiropractic Philosophers. So after a work career that included building uh, sets for TVs and movies, we get to have him on TV, on video, in the Mile High podcast and audio. So his professional home now is chiropractic. And he also is currently drinking a Dulacino out of a Liam Schubel Big Deal certified mug. And he resides and practices in Pekin, South Carolina with his wife Dawn and children, Sarah and Jackson. Welcome. Welcome. So glad to have you at the Mile High Podcast, sir. Well, thank you, sir. It's a honor, honor, honor to be here and uh, glad to spend some time hanging out today. And we are honored to have you attend and share and speak from the Mile High stage this coming year. Um, and this will be your first time presenting at Mile High. You, you helped lead a philosophy panel, uh, mm -hmm. but this time you'll be doing a continuing ed education session for one hour. So uh, how do you feel about that? I am excited. So uh, unfortunately, this is I haven't been to every Mile High, but this will be my third one in a row. And it is just an amazing event. So, and you know, school uh, sends me to a lot of places, um, but this is one of those that I would gladly pay for, and I am out of my own pocket because I think it's that worthy of an event. And without a doubt, I can guarantee this will be the best talk anyone ever hears given at that very moment. Well, that's that's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> I, I, yeah, we're playing big. We're playing big this year, folks. Well. Let's get to know Dr. Dooley a little bit more uh, sure. and what makes him tick, uh, pun intended. So uh, what brought you to the chiropractic world? Str would you believe it if I said a naked man statue in Los Angeles? I would not believe it, but nothing, <laughs> you know, th stranger things have happened. I'm sure. So when, when I was a kid, I remember the 1984 Olympics being in Atlanta or Atlanta, sorry, Los Angeles. And so one of the, um, so they had a story, one of the guys at the time, and people have probably heard about him, a guy named Terry Schrader, who played on the uh, water polo team for many years for the Olympics. So he was on the team and they used his statue as one of the bronze nudes in front of the Los Angeles Coliseum. So I remember they talked about it on NBC or whatever channel. Then there was an article in Sports Illustrated. And that's really, because uh, his whole family is like 30 chiropractors. That was really the first time I had heard about chiropractic. And, and so it didn't go much farther than that. Um, my dad had some back issues. Uh, and so I think he may have gone. We never went as kids. And then if we fast forward, I was in the movie construction business. And I, I blew a disc big time when I was about 24. And I remember going into the physical therapist at the time, because that's where workers comp sent me was they said, you're going to have to live with this pain for the rest of your life. And I remember thinking back then, not knowing what I know now about chiropractic, well, that stinks. 
I'm 24 years old and I'm going to be miserable. So I was the guy that every, every morning or throughout the day, you do the double lumbar roll by swinging your legs over, uh, you know, doing push-ups, keeping your, your hips down and that type of stuff. I remember looking at my x-rays back then, and I had like zero lumbar curve at that point. It was a straight stick. So looking back on it, it's like, well, no wonder I had issues. And I'd been through car accidents. I played football through high school. So I'd taken some bangs and knocks, but nobody ever told me about the chiropractor. And then fast forward a few years later, a um, couple, yeah, I got tired of corporate America a little bit. And so had a couple layoff situations. And I thought, well, I want to be the master of my success or failure. I could be okay with that. If I try something and fail, but it was on me, um, I'm okay with that. And so I was driving by a chiropractor's office, still having a little bit of back pain, that type of stuff. Um, I thought, well, why don't I try this out? Because where I live in South Carolina, it's a blue collar manufacturing area. So my thought was, everybody's got some sore neck or a stiff back. And because that's what I thought chiropractic was about. So then, well, where do you go to school? My wife was all for it. For me to go back to school, uh, we had a I guess at that time, she was a four or five year old. Uh, so my wife was super supportive. I was on the Yahoo. Back then, they didn't have the Google. We had the Yahoo. And so I went on the internet. And uh, the, the, so, so, so where are chiropractic schools? I had known about life because we lived in Atlanta. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe we move back there or because uh, we were living in South Carolina at the time. And then maybe we moved back to Atlanta. Maybe uh, I go down during the week and come home on the weekend. So we started playing with that. But the first thing to come up, the first school on the, on the it website was some school in Davenport, Iowa. And my first thought was like, why would anybody go to anywhere in Davenport, Iowa, not knowing the history? So that was Palmer. The second one was life. But then the third one that was listed said Spartanburg, South Carolina, which was only an hour for me. And, and I know a lot of people go to chiropractic school because of convenience. It's probably not why you should, but in this case, I'm kind of glad I did. Um, and so I asked my wife, who's from Gaffney, and anyone that's been in South Carolina, she's where the beach is. So you House of Cards fans, that's where Frank Underwood's from. And so she didn't know about the school. Um, so then I went on what was their version of career day. And as I went, Dr. David Koch, who was the president at the time, gave me my first health talk on chiropractic. And that was the first time I ever heard the words innate intelligence. Well, he spoke for about three minutes and I said, well, I'm in. The rest of this day is a formality. I'm really just here for the free lunch now because I was in at that point. <laughs> well, you know, don't don't ever let it be said that there's no free lunch. No, exactly. Well, <laughs> obviously, I'm still paying for it. I'm still here for heaven's sakes. <laughs> so, so now let's dive into chiropractic philosophy a little bit deeper now that we know a little bit more about the dually and what ticks sure. him, what makes him tick <laughs> yeah. personally, and what makes you tick in terms of chiropractic. In teaching all the courses you teach at Sherman, what are some of the things that you um, really excite you about teaching philosophy? I really enjoy, so when, when I got a chance to teach here, if I was to pick two classes that I would at least start with, philosophy two, which the entire class, it's three days a week, uh, is devoted on the 33 principles and then chiropractic history. So I was super blessed that I could come into this line of work doing what I really would want to do. And the principles, I like the challenge because I hear all the time that they're confusing, they're hard, nobody knows, they're hard to get, patients won't understand. And I would argue they totally get them. They totally get them. They live them through their lives. We've just got to be able to explain them. And it's really fun to, on day one, for instance, when we're just doing our intro to the quarter, start talking about, you know, we're not about symptoms. And we're, you know, we're about, uh, you know, and just building that up. And I had a student last quarter. She's like, so what do we do? And I said, that's what the class is about. Ask me again at the end. And so to see where they are in the beginning to where we take them at the end, is fantastic. It's just a huge amount of fun um, when they're talking. You know, we're in midterms right now, so class this morning, a lot of blank stares. They're just like, oh, fella, because they got beat up by the midterms. I mean, I wish, I wish we could talk more of the philosophy, uh, and they didn't get so beat up with the national board's um, stuff that they have to do, but they have to do it. Um, but it's nice to be able to do the philosophy, and then when they say, well, here's a class. I don't know why I'm taking it. Well, tell me something in that class. And they might talk about the Krebs cycle because biochemistry always comes up. 
Well, then we're able to talk about intelligence, force, and matter, and intelligence through the Krebs cycle, uh, you know, and say so because you know most of our, which I would, um, I'd like to plug Mile High because Joel Kinch did a fantastic Green Book study last year, where he talked about our principles primarily they're abstract ideas, and so we're able to you know for a long time when I was here and then when I was a student here. Oh, you have to take these classes because the CCE says so. And I started thinking that that was just a really garbage answer because that's kind of like doing stuff because my parents said so, but not because I was really, there was a reason. And so what I like about like, like biochemistry and pathophysiology and all those other ology classes that were part one of the boards, that's the meat and potatoes for our abstract principles. So I can use those classes and say, here's why these principles are true. You want to talk evidence-based? Here it is right here. Um, and so I just really love having the conversation about it and being able to um, tell the students, all right, this happened yesterday. How does this relate to this particular principle? Because I still practice. So it's, it's nice to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a lot better at it than you think. And, and, and it's just, it's fun. So... And, and, you know, also people have to realize that learning philosophy and communicating philosophy is practical. Uh, and that being said, you are now the chair of the newly formed business department at Sherman College. Um, so how do we bring philosophy into business? Well, you know, the philosophy is the why of what we do. And so no matter what procedures we have, if we're not fulfilling that why, we shouldn't be doing those procedures at the end of the day. And so if you take most of the principles, they're universal principles is what we would call. So it's not just about chiropractic, they really work anywhere. So if you just look at the triune of life, simple one, number four, intelligence, force, and matter. And so if I have an office, and this is my business, and we tell the students, right, so you have an intelligence, you have a thought of where you want that print or that office to go. You've got matter in that office, so maybe your table, your chairs, your computers, your CAs, yourself, um, and now you have to put the force in in order to make that thing work. So maybe that's training with your staff. Maybe that's going to seminars like Mile High. Maybe that, you know, putting in that 100% force will then bring that practice to 100% life. And so those are just some of the ways that we'll talk about it um, that, you know, and, and Everybody gets that, right? Everybody knows that you get out of what you put into it. And so that's really what uh, principle four is, or principle five is the 100% version of it. So that's kind of what we try to do. My job, I like to ask the other professors, what are the topics that you're going over in class? And then I'll shoot them. I say, well, ask them how this relates to this principle and that type of things. And then the students are able to say, boy, these things really aren't so um, so wildly out there, maybe some of the grammar they chose to use could be challenging, but then that's why we should be discussing them in the first place versus, well, I'm just not going to listen to it because it's kind of quirky. Well, you know, I'm excited hearing this about what you're going to be bringing to the stage at Mile High, uh, that you're going to be bringing philosophy, business, practicality, things that will help you in communication, because that's what you're doing every day at Sherman College. Now, that being said, um, we recently had, it's very time, timely that you're on this podcast. Now, you just recently were at Sherman College for a very big celebration, um, which was the ribbon cutting. So a lot of times I hear from people questions like, what is going on at Sherman College? Um, and being that you're there and you're uh, assistant professor um, and chair of a business department, um, share a little bit about the excitement with the new construction in the ribbon cutting. This is, we just opened up, I think it's 22,000 square foot, Dr. Tom, doctors, Tom and Betty Gilardi student center. Um, traditionally the model of Sherman college has been, you come in, we give you information and you leave. Um, today's student likes to commune and likes to hang out. And so what we've added is that building has a 650 seat auditorium. It has our library. It has uh, the cafe. It's got the bookstore, lots of study space. Um, it literally has a grand staircase of 33 steps. So we take those things pretty serious. And so now what it's done is made the college really look like a campus for those that have come. So we have our buildings. 
the academic building, which was kind of, it was the multi-purpose room really for the college, um, is now purely academic. It's, we've got great technology. Um, a good friend of ours and, and yours, Tristan Shaw, was in class this morning from Miami, Florida, Florida, because we have the technology to do Skype or Zoom conferences right over the computers in the school. So the students can interact as if they're in the classroom. That's so that, oh, it's awesome because you can get any, as long as they're okay with speaking uh, during your class time, you can bring anybody from all over the world in to talk to the students. And so it's made us a lot more versatile because the old days, oh, it's kind of, hey, Danny Knowles just happens to be coming through town. So maybe I would invite you into class. But now I can actually schedule it out so that I know what you say is going to hopefully reinforce the concepts we're teaching in the class. Because the students, it's great for the students to hear from folks that are doing it outside the class. Because what we're saying, you know, they're not listening to us anyway, because they have so many other things. But when somebody else comes in, they always pay a little bit more attention. And it's helpful to us because, right, they're saying the exact same things we're saying here. Uh, and it just reinforces it for the students. So it's a really cool thing. And that's led us to, I think, every chiropractor that's out there, if we said, what would you want more, everybody would say business. And so Sherman took that quite literally. And so we started, uh, well, one, we started what was called our G10 program. And that's about within 10 years of graduation, we want all of our graduates to be out of debt, um, making some money of their own and in a position that they can give back to the profession, however they see fit. Um, as most people know it, you know, not a whole lot of people are out of debt within 10 years, but that's our plan. And the plan is so we can start them, um, you know, with all the things you have to figure out how to run a business, we're doing that the entire time they're here. So every quarter that they're here, they'll have at least one class on business principles and basically get out of here with a portfolio. This is their exact practice of what they need to do to get up and run it. Well, this is very, this is very, very exciting because um, it really makes it sound like it's an outstanding time to be at Sherman college as a student. The excitement here is tremendous. So I've been here six years and just the excitement of the faculty, staff, and the students, and everybody interacting with each other, it's an extraordinarily fun place to be. Um, it's a challenge. Uh, it's work for the teachers. It's work for the students. But it's wonderful work that we're in. Um, you know, people ask, I live an hour away from school, so five days a week, I drive an hour, do school, drive back an hour, and go practice. And people ask, why do you do it? I said, because it's flipping a fantastic place to work. And so, and what makes it fantastic is the relationships that we have as faculty with each other, but then certainly with the students. Um, Sherman, I believe, is always going to maintain that family atmosphere, so you're not a number here. We're going to know your name. Uh, we like to sit in a cafe and talk to students. We like to go to student-led clubs, so the students lead the clubs here. We like to show up when we're invited. We like to hang out with them afterwards, just talking about chiropractic and and being as practical as we can with, with all our knowledge. So it is a terrific time to be here. Excellent, excellent. And I love hearing that. We, the, the energy was so incredibly palpable at the uh, ribbon cutting and the gratitude. And I know you said you've been there six years, but actually you've been mm -hmm. there longer because you were a student. So, I was. Yeah, so, uh, so the- This is my 34th quarter, getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> That means you passed the 33 quarters. I did. I've gotten through 33 principles. quarters here so far. So yes. I'm yes. well on my way. Excellent. So we need to come up with the 34th principle for the 34th quarter. Give me a minute. We'll get one. Oh, we'll get one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. And can you share a little bit about what you've enjoyed and what um, has excited you about being a, at Mile High each year and coming back? Uh, number one, I mean, the climate change is amazing from where I live. So you, you mentioned 5,280. We're at about 175 feet here. Um, so it's wonderful to see a different part of the country. That being said, it's just, it's the fellowship, really. Uh, the seminar stuff, you know, that's, you know, a lot of seminars you go, you might be tempted to be candy crushing. You won't be at this one. Um, so the content that you bring in, and I hope I live up to that, is, is second to none. So while I'm in the seminars, you know, I'm watching and taking notes 
And then, you know, the stuff that goes on in the halls is just fantastic. So many times when we're in practice, we feel like we're on an island. Um, but it's an island full of great people if you're at mile high. And so I just highly recommend people go. And, and as I said, it's, there's not many events that I pay out of my own pocket to go to, mostly due to time. But this is one I'm going to try my best not to miss ever again. So I missed the first four, but the last two have been fantastic. And I know that this one will be as well. Well, and, and, and I appreciate you saying that. And it's mile high seven, so you have to be there. Uh, well, exactly right. Because we're, we're going to have the 007 theme. And, and uh, I look forward to seeing if you actually wear a tux or something like that or how you, what kind of, uh, or maybe there's some other James Bond garb that you, you don. <laughs> you, you never can tell what I'm going to pull out. We'll see. You can, yeah, yeah. We'll have to keep it a seat. I still, and I'm still thinking, I might come up with another song. I think I got one. Ooh. I know. We'll see. We'll Wait, see. Well, I'll send it to you first. Don't put it out in public because we want people to go to this thing. <laughs> um, and there, there's a great music when you put in to get into James Bond land. So it'll be great oh, for, all, for the A event. lot of good stuff. Yes, yes. So, um, we're looking forward to having you out in Colorado. We're grateful to have you there. And we're grateful to have you on the Mile High Podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone else. Hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. And we look forward to seeing you at Mile High, www.milehighchiroregistration.com. Listening to this podcast, you can use savings code MH Podcast and it'll save $50 off registration. So look forward to seeing you there. Dr. Brian Dooley, it's a pleasure. We look forward to seeing you out at higher altitude as we help people rise up to, uh, to chiropractic. And that, keep changing. Can't wait to go. Uh, we, we're psyched to have you. Keep changing spines and minds and lives with chiropractic. Like our page on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mile High Cairo.